Could an engraved Dolomite boulder be a depiction of a tortoise shell used in deep cave rituals? That's the question I'm exploring in this video. A new paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences details research into this artifact and the context in which it was found and suggests that it may well be a ritual object created by hunter-gatherers more than 35,000 years ago. Its location in the Levant is particularly interesting because engraved objects are normally found there in a domestic context rather than a ritual one. Let's get into it. Paleolithic rock art is a fascinating subject because there's a lot of it and it's not really clear why our ancestors were so keen on making it. Rock paintings and engravings may well have been created for their aesthetic beauty, but there may have been more practical reasons behind such skilled endeavours, such as to plan hunting strategies or to educate the next generation on surrounding fauna. A relationship with hunting makes sense because the majority of these artistic depictions are of animals, but there are also advocates for the art having played a more ritualistic and spiritual role in the lives of hunter-gatherers. Perhaps all of these ideas are right and there were multifunctional tableaus meeting a variety of needs. However, paintings and petroglyphs in rock shelters and caves were not the only seemingly artistic activities carried out by hunter-gatherers. They also made portable art such as the famous goddess figurines and small animal sculptures. Two of my favourite hypotheses about ancient rock art suggest that a calendar may have been embodied in certain paintings and that at one site an erupting volcano is depicted. The deeper we delve, the richer the subject becomes. Now a new paper details the discovery of an intriguing piece of portable art dating to the early Paleolithic which was found in a context that suggests it had a ritual purpose. What's most intriguing is that this object is from a site in the Levant, a region where ritual artifacts from that time period are not usually found. Identifying collective ritual practices in the archaeological record is not easy. Such practices are thought to have emerged as social complexity increased, since they may have facilitated the cohesion between different groups. Engraved artifacts are not common in the Levant, but when they are found, they are usually in domestic contexts and are of a personal nature. Interestingly, in the Levant, there's also no obvious distinction at Paleolithic sites between domestic areas and those that may have been used for other activities. So this new discovery and the section of the cave in which it was found are exceptional in this regard. Manot Cave is an early upper Paleolithic site in Israel that's around 9 kilometers from the present coastline. It was occupied between 46,000 and 33,000 years ago by the Armarian Levantine Oreg Nation and Atlitchian cultures. The cave was first discovered in 2008 and excavations since then have found evidence for flint napping, animal butchering, food consumption and the construction of combustion structures all within living areas close to the cave's entrance. In contrast, the cave's deeper sections were not associated with domestic activities. One of these sections is referred to in the paper as the ritual compound. It's made up of a large high gallery with a 20 meter high ceiling and a small hidden chamber to the south. The gallery is separated from the main cavern by speleotherms and has a relatively dry environment compared to other sections of the cave. It was in this gallery that a large boulder was found with engraved geometric patterns. The hidden chamber is referred to as such because it is somewhat screened off from the gallery by speleotherms making it difficult to see inside it and to access it. Inside, archaeologists discovered a complete antler from a fallow deer that showed signs it had been used. The engraved boulder is made of dolomite and measures 29 by 22 by 25 centimetres. It was found in a niche inside the wall at the back of the cave, with its engraved parts facing into the gallery. The engravings cover three sides of the boulder and are made up of polygons and chevrons set out in two rows that are separated by a central line. Some of the lines are engraved deeply and others are more shallow. 
The researchers analyzed the boulder and its surroundings using a variety of methods to determine whether its carvings were anthropogenic or natural. They started off by examining the rest of the gallery to see if similar stones could be found, but did not come across any with such markings. Since no archaeological artifacts related to domestic activities were discovered in this part of the cave, it appears the placement of the boulder in this location was intentional and significant. The cave walls were inspected visually and do have groove marks on them. However, they are irregular natural fissures that are much different in appearance to those on the boulder. The boulder's deep grooves are uniform, with smooth, beveled walls and V-shaped cross-sections, whereas the shallow grooves have superficial linear cracks and irregular walls. This suggests that the deep grooves are man-made. A further analysis using a scanning confocal microscope revealed linear micro-scratches that suggest the grooves were made by the scratching action of a sharp flint tool. Experiments were carried out on similar boulders with water added to simulate the humid atmosphere of the cave. These experiments were able to reproduce the engraved boulder in a reasonable time. The carbonate crust of the boulder was dated and produced dates of between 59,300 and 27,800 years ago. This was compared to well-dated speleotherms which were dated to between 37,000 and 35,000 years ago and was a close match. Furthermore, the calcite crust of the antler deer was dated by its isotopic composition to 35,000 years ago. The authors of the paper argue that this deep cavern in the Manok cave was a distinct space separate from the domestic areas and was used specifically for group ritual activities. Several observations support this idea. The vast size of the gallery could have accommodated around 100 individuals, and previous work on the Levantine or Ignatian culture found it likely that they maintained strong connections between different communities. So the gallery could have been used as a ritual site to bring several groups together in order to maintain a social network, something that would have been important to maintain population levels. During the time that the Aurignacian culture occupied the cave, there was an increased exploitation of small game and a large accumulation of artifacts, including shells, bone tools, grinding stones and incised bones. This suggests hunter-gatherers began to inhabit the cave for longer periods, relying on a less mobile subsistence strategy. Such a change would have allowed groups to meet there seasonally for collective practices. A stalagmite with traces of soot in its lamina was found in the ritual compound. This dated to 36,000 years ago. No evidence of hearths could be found in the ritual compound, but the soot does suggest fire was used to light the area. This may have been via torches or fireplaces that were only used for a short time and therefore didn't leave a trace on the ground. Work at the sites of cave paintings that date to the Paleolithic has determined that they could only have been made with the use of artificial light. Such evidence is usually found as combustion residue. However, this combustion residue has been found in caves in use from the Magdalenian onwards, so later than the Auric nation. The acoustic properties of the ritual compound were also tested and showed it was conducive to comfortable conversations and listening. So if this engraved boulder was a ritual object used for particular group ceremonies in a part of the cave reserved for this purpose, then what did it represent? The authors of the paper suggest that it is an abstract depiction of a tortoise. Over the years, archaeologists have found the Mediterranean land tortoise, the Testuda Greca, at many lower Paleolithic sites in the Levant, but such remains are particularly common at sites from the Middle Paleolithic onwards. This shows that the tortoise was an important dietary supplement. In the Manok cave, tortoise remains have been found in assemblages belonging to both the Aurig nation and Armarian. It's possible that beyond its importance as food, the tortoise was also appreciated from a spiritual perspective, since its shell provides shelter and protection just as the caves occupied by hunter-gatherers did. The pattern on the boulder is similar to an artefact known as the chevron plaquette, dating to between 25,000 and 23,000 years ago, and discovered at the Epi-Paleolithic site of Ain Kashish, south. 
During the late Epipaleolithic, there's evidence for the symbolic use of tortoises at several Natufian sites. At the Hillazon Tajit cave, around 70 tortoise shells were found alongside a burial of an individual thought to have been a shaman. And a 1.2 meter high limestone monolith at Wadi Hamet 27 is engraved with a schematic depiction of a tortoise. Outside of the region, the tortoise played a symbolic role in the religions and mythological beliefs of a number of ancient cultures. Although antlers were largely used as raw materials for practical purposes across Europe in the Upper Paleolithic, in the Levant they were scarce, so were mostly used for crafting, hunting and decoration. Later on in the Middle Paleolithic, they were used as grave goods, so it's quite possible that the complete antler found in the ritual compound in the Manok Cave had a symbolic function just as the engraved boulder may have had. Manok Cave is the only known site in the Levant with evidence for communal ritual practices. That's it. If you've got this far, then please hit the like button. Thank you to my patrons and channel members, and I'll see you next time.